thought I'm okay. Uh, my name is Maya Trail, and I'm a head of the Latvian Culture Canon Project. Uh, and nice to meet you here on Zoom within educational program of the Summer School of Latvian Language and Culture. Unfortunately, we can meet only online, but I think that it's also an opportunity to take a deeper look into digital resources of Latvian culture. I'll try to share my screen. So, uh -huh. so I hope Here. you can see it. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Here. Okay. Okay. Full screen mode. So here, full oh, screen. But, okay. Yes, but now I can't see you. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay, and today we have two hours to take a look uh, to the creme de la creme of the Latvian culture. Um, and now you can see only a great uh, background behind me, but actually I'm inside one of the most outstanding buildings in Latvia at the moment. Um, this is uh, the building of the National Library of Latvia, which is a realizer of the Latvia's Culture Canon project. And I don't know how much you already know about Latvian culture, but I hope in these two hours we are spending together. In metaphor, you'll build your own image about it from a gray wall to a beautiful building. And this won't be just a lecture. I will ask you to interact, to share your experience and to make your own choices. Uh, I, I hope I can see <laughs> the chat, but uh, I, I hope we uh, we can manage everything. Uh, so uh, I'll show the presentation, but also I'll give you some links uh, on chat box. Um, and if you have questions, uh, please write down them in the chat box, uh, or you can try to raise hand in Zoom, and I'll try to answer. And I hope uh, that we'll have an interesting time together. Uh, and so, uh, what is the cultural canon and why to talk about it? Uh, at first, about lists and list making. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, there is uh, some, uh, some thoughts of Umberto Eco, a novelist and a philosopher. Uh, he wrote that the list is the origin of culture. It's part of the history of art and literature. What does culture want? To make infinity comprehensible. It also wants to create order, not always, but often. And how, as a human being, does one face infinity? How does one attempt to grasp the incomprehensible? Through lists, through catalogues, through collections in museums, and through encyclopedias and dictionaries. The list doesn't destroy culture, it creates it. Wherever you look in cultural history, you will find lists. And so uh, the culture, uh, the list of the culture canon of Latvia is also one of uh, those lists. And uh, there is also um, one, uh, one uh, thing that uh, ha ha had uh, uh, written Iman Ziedons, Latvian writer, uh, his works are included in, included in the Latvia's cultural canon too. And he wrote about self-confidence uh, and uh, what he, uh, he said. We have to dare to stand up for the life or soul of the nation. We have to name these values aloud. Otherwise, we only think and think about things that are happening. But they will survive only if someone will name them. So let's do that. Let's name them aloud. Um, but um, don't take it too serious. Um, this is a meme which is made by some high school student for the Latvia's cultural canon competition. Uh, we organize one every year. And there you can see a shot from the film 10, 10 minutes older, but they sent minutes and in Latvian, uh, which is included in the canon too. And it's documentary, which was filmed in one 10 minute shot. And in this movie, you can see only face of a little boy who is watching a performance in puppet theater. I'll film, film is 10 minutes uh, 
long, and this is a huge scale of emotions in his face. Uh, but there, in this uh, meme, you can see it was created uh, uh, before uh, Latvia celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2018. And uh, uh, so uh, there, as you can see, uh, in translation was uh, written, uh, uh, when Latvia is going to celebrate its uh, 100th birthday soon, but there are only 99 values in the Latvian cultural canon. Uh, so that was three years ago, and I can say ahead that at the moment we have already 108 elements in the Latvian culture canon. Um, so, uh, and maybe it will uh, grow more. <laughs> um, but while I'll tell you about formation of the Latvian culture canon and about its structure, uh, could you please write down on the chat box what country do you come from? And does at your home and have something like cultural canon or some other kind of cultural treasures list? Uh, I think that would be interesting for me. I think that would be interesting for you also to see uh, something uh, like uh, this. And um, uh, well, uh, there you can see uh, the Latvian culture canon structure. It's a collection of the most outstanding and significant works of art and cultural heritage in eight spheres, architecture and design, for performing arts, visual art, traditional culture, literature, music, film, and landscapes. Um, and uh, a bit about uh, history, uh, formation of the last Latvian cultural canon. Um, the beginning of the Latvian cultural canon, it was 2008, 2009, uh, when uh, groups of experts from uh -huh. different spheres, uh, you can see them, uh, architecture and design, I, I already uh, named them. Uh, uh, they uh, met each other and chose uh, 99 elements. Uh, and uh, it was uh, supplemented with landscapes uh, in 2000, uh, in this year. Uh, but uh, the beginning of the Latvian culture canon is almost the same time as the Danish culture canon, which was started in 2005. And uh, about similarities and differences between Latvian and Danish culture canons is very interesting that there are different categories at their cultural uh, canon, similar but different. Um, uh, for example, they, uh, uh, in Denmark, they have children's culture as, uh, as a separated uh, um, category, but lacks traditional culture and landscapes. And I think uh, those choices also represents the priorities of different nations. Uh, maybe we Latvians are closer to nature and our traditions, to our ancestry. And Danish people view maybe is more focused to future, to next generations. Uh, that's only hypothesis. And Latvians maybe are more focused to past, to our uh, roots. Um, so I'll, I'll take a look. Uh, maybe in the chat have you uh, uh, so 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 i i can see ah uh, okay now i can see chat i i stopped sharing screen but i'll i'll do it uh, again so we have iran persia Young Zealand and New Zealand, we have many institutions for the preservation of history and culture. Vatsia, Denmark, uh, also England, Shakespeare paintings, classical and modern music, architecture, royal family and museums, of course, uh, we know. Uh, Croatia, Kina, China, Japan, Ukraine, Igaonia. Oh, nice to meet you all. Uh, but we haven't anybody from Denmark. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Uh, now I share my screen uh, again. Um, mm -hmm. And. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
one minute, sorry. Uh, one more time. Oh yes, everything is correct. So, um, and I'll give you a brief uh, insight uh, into all sec sectors of Latvia, Latvia's cultural canon. Um, Um, and I'll start with um, traditional culture. I will go, uh, we, we will go through all eight sectors of treasures and you will have an opportunity to share which of them interested you most uh, in, in chat, yes. And, um, so traditional culture. Uh, there are uh, 14 folk tradition uh, treasures selected include not only ones rooted in an ancient times, but also some associated with this day and age. And interesting fact, uh, most nine of them are related to music, especially singing. Uh, maybe you already know uh, that Latvians are called, or maybe we call ourselves, the singing nation. Uh, we have song celebrations. Uh, which is uh, one of the values of traditional culture and folk songs dynasty, uh, uh, which also are there. And uh, there is saying that every Latvian has his own folk song because we have a lot of them. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, not only one, but few uh, these values are related to dead people and cemetery culture. This culture is traditionally very important for Latvian people too. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's the way we, we are. And, um, but uh, first I want to uh, present my, my shoes. Uh, this is a rye, rye bread. Uh, you can see in pictures, uh, one is uh, in traditional feast table, there you can see rye bread. And also in this picture you can see our uh, traditional costumes and also there are um, suiti. Uh, this is a, a group of people uh, living in one area of uh, Latvia. Also they have their singing traditions and uh, uh, food traditions and they also are included in this uh, traditional um, culture uh, canon. Uh, but um, back to the rye bread, um, uh, if you mention Latvian foods and one of the first things to come to mind is Latvian rye bread. This is also the food that most Latvians crave if they have been living outside Latvia and have a yearning for food from the homeland. And Latvian rye bread is much heavier than the standard rye or full grain bread available in most supermarkets. Uh, and it's most similar to the Russian Chorny Chleb or uh, German Schwarzbrot or black bread. And this bread is considered uh, healthier than white uh, or wheat bread and has a lower glycemical index. It contains a large amount of fiber and a small amount of fat, so it's very healthy. And um, rye bread has for centuries been a staple of the Latvian diet. Rye and barley were the grains that were available all year around. Uh, wheat was a deli delicacy and white bread was only baked on special occasions. And rye has been grown in Latvia for over uh, 1,200 uh, years. Authentic rye bread can be purchased at Latvian farmers markets and open air fairs from the stalls of local bread artisans. Some uh, loaves are baked uh, surrounded by maple leaves for added flavor. Uh, and the bread also has a long shelf life. It can be stored for months rather than days. And for Latvians, it's a popular food to bring along uh, uh, when traveling uh, as it doesn't spoil. Uh, leftover rye bread is not wasted either. Rye bread crumbs are used to make a delicious dessert uh, called Rupmaises Kartuium so, or uh, other one, uh, it's like a rye bread soup uh, called Maises Zuppa, made with rye bread, dried fruit, whipped cream and cranberries. And the classic snack served in restaurants and bars uh, as a starter is Tiploku Grausdini. 
uh, it's a uh, fried dry bread with garlic served with mayonnaise. And there are a number of traditions and beliefs associated with bread, and some of them are still alive. For example, one, if bread is accidentally dropped on the floor, it must be immediately picked up and kissed so God doesn't get angry. And actually, I can attest uh, that I act this way by myself too, uh, and such behavior has no uh, rational uh, explanation, but I just do it. So uh, now I'll um, I'll stop presentation and um, oh, I show you there you can see. Uh, so make your own uh, choice. I'll um, I'll post uh, this um, this uh, link in a chat box where you can um, check all the uh, traditions by yourself. So there is a link. So please go there. You have 10 minutes uh, and uh, please uh, to make your choice. Uh, which uh, which uh, Latvian uh, traditional culture value is most interesting for you? And if you want, you can write uh, why. <laughs> so. Ten minutes uh, and enjoy. <laughs>
So we have three minutes left to make a choice. Okay, at the moment, Tom is the only one who wrote that he is particularly interested in the Latgalian pottery. Uh, does anybody else wants to share? Just first impression, which which was the most interesting thing for you. Which you would like to learn more about? Are you asking us to um, share our favorite things? Yes, please share your uh, favorite uh, things. Uh, sorry if uh, uh, if I wasn't clear. <laughs> or maybe have to put it in the chat box. Yes, or... please uh, uh, write uh, write them in uh, in the chat box, or you can say it actually aloud if you want. Maybe if it's more uh, easier for you. I have a photograph to share with the group. Okay. Um, it is about Ligua. Uh, my mm. favorite one is, is Ligua Midsummer. Mm -hmm. uh, can you can you see my picture? Yes, it's mm. very beautiful. Uh, in 2008, I was in Riga for Ligua and I visited my family who live in Suntazi in the countryside and my cousin made um, the headdress. What What is the word in Latvian for headdress? Um, Vainax. Vainax for me. She made the headdress in about 30 minutes <laughs> and I took it back to Riga for the next day for the celebrations. I, I love you, uh, Ligua, my favorite. Thank you, Julia. So, and uh, 
Matsyar, uh, I hope I pronounced correctly, or, or please correct me, uh, wrote that I like the Midsummer Eve Festival also. Yes, uh, that's, uh, that's a great festival. I have a question. Yes. Um, in the part where the um, literature, um, well, writers um, are listed, mm -hmm. um, Andres Pumpurs, mm -hmm. the writer of the national epic Large Places, yes, is not uh, in this group. Is there a reason? Uh, you are asking why why isn't he uh, the, uh, yes of course uh, uh, that kind of list always there are a lot of question uh, questions why isn't there uh, one or uh, another uh, famous uh, writer and um, I can't give you one answer one answer also that then we can uh, question why uh, isn't there Aspazi, uh, she's one of the most famous uh, poets uh, in Latvia, also a feminist, uh, but uh, she okay. isn't, uh, but uh, I think uh, we can uh, we can discuss uh, in uh, in our group or in uh, in some expert groups and uh, this kind of it's it's not uh, it's not finished. Uh, okay. I think uh, it can uh, it can be be changed, uh, but we, we we will go to, to the later. Yes, there. but this uh, this uh, literary work, uh, large places, mm -hmm. is it still read in school? Or I mean, the the figure large places mm -hmm. is everywhere in Latvia. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see it on a bottle of beer or on Freedom Monument everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe also on, on the lats of uh, informal times, I, I don't know. Okay. So it's, um, is it present still? Uh, yes, it's it's a national hero, we can say. He, he comes from uh, folk culture, from, uh, so it's uh, close to traditional culture, uh, uh, but uh, about Pumpers, uh, there, there are not only uh, Pumpers uh, epos about large places, there are also uh, Rainis uh, play uh, about uh, large places uh, uh, called the, the Fire and uh, the Night, Ugonsu Nakts, and uh, some other uh, um, masterpieces and uh, I don't know uh, do school children have to uh, read it uh, but uh, I think yes I, I read it uh, but I, I actually my mother uh, read it for me uh, before school when, when I was uh, I don't know three or four okay. years old and I think that's a good age uh, when to meet first uh, this um, <gasps> mysterious stories <laughs> yes i also read it um and i i i thought it there's everything inside about latvia you can learn so much about uh, mythical places that uh, really exist um and uh, also about the traditions um ancient gods with the christianity in combination how they fit together in this uh, time since the Middle Ages. So, uh, well, it's fiction, but it's um, it's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. it's fiction, but you can learn a lot about Latvians uh, by reading uh, it. Okay, thank you, Robert, uh, very much. We have more comments. Uh, so, Lea wrote uh, that she, she had tried the rye bread and it was delicious, but at first I thought it was burn because in Croatia we don't have such dark bread. Yes, uh, and I also love Liova the belt. Uh, the red and white patterns are really interesting. Yes, and uh, also this Liova belt is called like a Latvian code that there is written something mysterious about our nation. Of course, it's, uh, it's more speculation, but it's interesting. Um, so, uh, but uh, let's go uh, ahead uh, uh, back to uh, our, 
or maybe uh, somebody wanted to add something important for you. Okay, then later. Um, okay, I'll share my presentation again. And now uh, we have reached our architecture and design and uh, architecture and design are represented in the canon by a diverse set of 18 different treasures from long ago to the present day. And there are treasures and their creators that have gained wide awareness and general recognition as well as uh, lesser known works and truly local treasures. And the quality and the message were a key criteria in this selection. And I, uh, I have made my, my choose. And uh, you, have, you have seen already this building, yes. Um, uh, and uh, this is uh, so-called the Castle of Light or the National Library of Latvia, in, uh, which uh, inside I am at the moment. And uh, architect Gunnar Birkertz uh, is uh, included in uh, the cultural canon. And he's one of Latvia's most celebrated architects, well re renowned in the United States of America and further a field for his striking modernist designs. Um, uh, through who, his career in the second half of the uh, 20th century, Birkertz delivered almost uh, 300 designs, including the highly uh, geometrical Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art and the Corning Museum of Glass uh, in New York, which is fashioned uh, to look like a melting glass. But uh, uh, the National uh, Library of Latvia, the building of the National Library of Latvia is his uh, final masterpiece. And uh, it's also award-winning uh, building. And it's one of the symbols of present day Latvia. And uh, commissioned as far back as 1988. Uh, yes, uh, that was the year when it started, uh, but yet completed in uh, 2014. Um, um, th uh, this building is a metaphor for a Latvian folk tale. Again, uh, our traditional culture, uh, of our folklore, in which uh, the castle of light, or guys must build in Latvian, represents wisdom. And wisdom, library, hmm, there are uh, some uh, links between uh, these uh, topics. And so the building is rich in symbols and allegories from Latvian culture and nature, and many of the building's uh, features pose a deeper meaning. Uh, for example, the asymmetrical shape of the building is inspired by a Latvian folktale about three men scaling a glass mountain, three brothers, uh, they were, on horseback to rescue an imprisoned sleeping princess. And the story that is also related to Latvian quest for independence. So uh, there is this uh, folk, uh, folk level and also this historical, metaphorical level. All, all of them uh, are in this one building. Uh, and for example, windows of the building are inspired by uh, and represent birch trees, uh, uh, which are uh, very pop popular in Latvia white trees with uh, black uh, stripe, stripes. And uh, the floor of the atrium has polished it granite light in a traditional Latvian linen waving pattern. And Birkert's design not only is the building itself, but also its interiors and furniture. And after completing the National Library of Latvia, Birkert's donated his own professional book collection to it. And in 2016, part of it was made only uh, accessible to library visitors in the so-called Birkert's Corner. And it provides a unique look into Birkert's mind, his inspirations and his era. But uh, for the contrast, 
I would like uh, to introduce you this very small design object uh, because we have, uh, as I mentioned, mentioned uh, architecture and design are uh, in one category. And so maybe this uh, castle of the light was one of the biggest objects and this is, uh, I think, the smallest um, uh, design object. And uh, uh, Andy Warhol had one, the British royal family had one, and it was the darling of intelligence service for worldwide. And this is uh, called Minox Camera. It's uh, the smallest camera in the world, and it was designed and built in the 1930s in Latvia. Uh, for its time, it was very technologically advanced and remains to this day uh, a fine example of excellent pro product uh, design. Uh, it was the branch of inventor Walter Stops, uh, and uh, the Minox camera is a mere uh, 17, 27, 80 millimeters in size and weighs 125 grams. Uh, and to better understand how teeny it is, it's often placed next to a cigarette lighter to compare in, in photos. Um, uh -huh. Dark chat, we have something written in chat. Uh, sorry, okay. Uh, I, I stopped to share uh, because uh, I want uh, you to make your choice again. Uh, uh, I'll try to maybe say clear, clearer. I'll give you a link to this category, architecture and design. And then you have uh, 10 minutes time. Uh, so there is a link. Uh, now it's uh, 28 minutes past one. So after 10 minutes, uh, you you can you can write down in chat box or you can uh, uh, tell us about your choice, which uh, which value from uh, architecture and design field is more interesting for you. So, and yes, I I can see we have questions. Uh huh. Okay, I'll try to answer then. Meanwhile. Yes, but uh, again, uh, Masira also is asking, which link do you mean now? Which the link? Same? Oh, okay, sorry. I, I, I put it uh, <laughs> privately to one of you uh, because we, we had uh, a chat. Uh, so, so now you can ah, see. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, excuse yes. me. Uh, now, 10 minutes from now, 29 to 39.
So we have three minutes left. Okay, I'll start uh, reading slowly some answers. Uh, so, Julia wrote, uh, I love the old Riga skyline, especially the view from a boat in the river Daugava. Yes, totally agree. I also love the gardens in Rundale Palace. Uh, yes, there are, there are uh, very beautiful uh, gardens of uh, uh, roses. Um, and uh, Matsya uh, wrote, Vatsrik Skyline, I like the best. It is fantastic and full of beauty, which I could watch for hours, but I don't understand how a modern building grows taller than the President Palace with a neon billboard. In most of the countries, you could not rise a building taller than the palace, which carries the city country flag. Hmm. Yes, that's a good point. So, Ka Kaori Yanagisawa, excuse me, <laughs> my pronunciation, wrote, I'd like to visit the Inter Concert Hall in Yurmal. It's beautiful. Yes, and Yurmal is a very beautiful uh, city. Um, it's like uh, for uh, relaxing and also for culture and uh, very, very beautiful uh, sea. Uh, Swamps uh, wrote, it's very cool the attachment that Latvians have to the lat steel on the weekend. I was talking with a friend whose earrings were made from lat coins. Yes, we have uh, our, uh, our money is euro now, but uh, we still have some connection with lats uh, in, uh, yes, in our... Um, as you mentioned, uh, earrings, for example, or some bracelets. <laughs> um, and uh, Robert wrote, I once visited the Salspils Memorial and it was very impressed, and I was very impressed. Yes, that's that's a sad, sad place that uh, also I can agree, it's very impressive. Uh, does anybody wants to say something to comment? Mm -hmm. If there are not more comments, then I'll go back to my presentation. So, and there you can see that we have reached literature and uh, the 14 liter literary treasures selected includes those works that have shaped Latvian literature and continue to influence it, starting with a first Latvian novel called Mernia Kulaiki, or The Time of the Land Surveyors uh, by Reins and Matis Kaudzitis, uh, and ending with Visma Belshevica's trilogy Bille. Uh, and this body of treasures presents a synopsis of the Latvian language, culture, and thinking. Um, because our time is limited and literature is so dependent from language, I want to ask you to make your choice in this category. Um, I'll just introduce you with one masterpiece of Latvian literature and also I will show you where to find more info about uh, contemporary Latvian literature if you will get interested. And uh, afterwards, of course, you can also check uh, uh, this uh, culture canon uh, website uh, but uh, there is uh, as a value uh, I would like to present this is a trilogy of novels called Bille by poet and writer Wisma Belshevica 
Uh, she was twice nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, Wism Welschwitz uh, first gained fame as a poet, controversial to the Soviets, and later in life again rose to national prominence for some autobiographical novels uh, set before, through and after the Second World War. Uh, and uh, to give you a quick insight, I'll show you um, a, a trailer of the film Bill, which is based on the autobiographical novel by Wism Belshevitsa. Um, I hope you will see it. Tāpēc tur visi dzīvoja laimīgi un nekad nestrīdējās. Beidos! Un gardas supas liek trieba katrā mājā un katru dienu. Mana mamma teica, ka lēpatrie ir tikai pasaka. see that you didn't so okay I, I'll try to show you one more time but uh, maybe uh, hmm. share screen so. Kad es biju maza, vecā māte man stāstīja par leipatriju. Ok, I just stopped to ask, uh, did you hear, hear? Yes, and so? Yeah, okay. that was correct. Ok, then I will try one more time. Excuse me. <laughs> Tur nekā netrūk. Tāpēc tur visi dzīvoja laimīgi un nekad nestrīdējās. Beidzās. Un gardas supas liepa trijā vārīja katrā mājā un katru dienu. Mana mamma teica, ka liepa trijā ir tikai pasaka. Zinu ar tevi kopā dzīvojot jau pat nebēs sveņģeļi sāks dzert. Paņems bili. Bērni vienmēr rodas tur, kur ir mīlestība. Tad tu domā, ka mamma mīlēja tētu mīles rodos?
Okay, I hope you saw it. Yes. Uh, then uh, I did it like in uh, in Latvian uh, fairy tale. Uh, one time unsuccessfully, uh, second time unsuccessfully, but third time I did it <laughs> like Antin on the glass mountain. Uh, so uh, thank you for your patience. <laughs> and um, let's go ahead um, with this presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we so, so, and uh, um, uh, there is information about uh, web page when you can find information about uh, Latvian literature today. The Latvian literature platform was established in order to promote rec uh, recognition of Latvian literature and its distribution abroad to ensure international cooperation among publishers, literary agents, writers, translators, organizers, and uh, uh, any kind of uh, people who are interested in Latvian uh, literature and, and culture. And um, I'll uh, post uh, this uh, link in, in the chat. Uh, so you can uh, you can uh, uh, take a look uh, here, um, but I, I I'll do it uh, a bit later. Uh, oh no, okay, I'll do it now. <laughs> so, uh, but now um, I would like to uh, tell you uh, more about uh, vis visual arts category and. Uh, for the visual arts particular work created by 15 uh, specific personalities have been selected and uh, the experts of visual arts they decided uh, to, to choose only artists who were no longer with us um, uh, at the moment uh, of the canon was, uh, canon was made. And um, uh, my, my choose. Uh, is uh, photo Surrey, uh, Riga proletarian districts, uh, late 19th, early 20th centuries by art photographer Egon Spuris. Uh, uh, the series of black and white photographs by Egon Spuris is the most outstanding contribution to Latin photography art, hinting at the great variety of styles in modernist photography. Uh, uh, while uh, depicting in an imaginative and at the same time a truthful manner the rough Soviet time life in Riga's working class districts. Uh, and Spurs photography has had a crucial impact on the development of Latvian and Baltic art photography. So I'll give you again this, um, this uh, link. So you can uh, watch by yourself uh, these photos. Um, and, um, um, and I I love these photos because there are a magic and uh, realistic atmosphere of Soviet Riga at the one time. And today Riga has uh, changed a lot. Uh, I would like to say that it's uh, much more colorful, maybe. But if you take a walk in these streets and yards from Spurious photos, I guess you would find a bit of this feeling uh, today either. And uh, I would like to present you one more uh, uh, example from this visual arts, uh, that's painting, Bessing, uh, Bessing Boys, or Zayani Paldata, Paldata Zayani, what is it? Um, and as you can see, uh, it uh, has been uh, painted uh, in turn of the centuries, uh, uh, 90, uh, 90 to 20th centuries uh, by uh, Johann Walter, also called Janis Walters. Um, and he was one of the most brilliant colorists and uh, admirers of the Impressionism in Latin art. Um, he was particularly interested in the play of light and reflections on water. He 
he was also a talented musician. Uh, he sought rhythm and harmony in painting as well, creating a sense of melodic uh, lightness in his uh, basing, basing voice, as well as in other water uh, themed paintings. Um, and this uh, picture suits very well to uh, Latvian summer this year, um, not today. Today is not so uh, hot, but there were very hot and sunny uh, days, uh, warm water and so on, all the things you can wish uh, for holidays. Uh, but um, now I would like you to ask uh, you to make your own choice again. Um, from the visual arts field. So there is a link uh, to Culture Canon webpage to this uh, category. And so you have 10 minutes uh, till three minutes past uh, two to choose which of these visual art uh, treasures is uh, the most interesting for you.
um, you have uh, some minutes, but while you are choosing, I would like to uh, read a, a comment of Ruafei Young, uh, to the, uh, which was a comment about uh, previous uh, topic uh, about uh, architecture. He wrote, uh, or she, sorry. <laughs> I also like the Vatriga skyline. Uh, uh, I once saw a photo taken inside the National Library and it also was very beautiful. Thank you. Yes, it's very beautiful here. And uh, we already have answers about visual art. Uh, Julia wrote, I like the work of Rosenthal's because it shows real people in real life situations. I feel like I could step into the picture. Yes, thank you, Julia. Uh, yes, uh, Ro Rosenthal's uh, works, uh, there are uh, uh, together uh, realism and also symbolism. They are very beautiful. Uh, Matsya wrote, I like artworks of Christoph Stelsis. Okay. Uh, there is a question, is Carl Zal a boy's name? Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's uh, an uh, artist, uh, first name Car Carl, uh, second name Zale, uh, and he's an author of our Freedom Mon Mon Monument. Uh, Does anybody want to comment in written or? I have a question. Um, yes. There's a lot of um, you can steal in Riga. Um, there is the you can steal a centers. Mm -hmm. And it's quite famous because it's very big, maybe one of the biggest you can steal centers in Europe. Yes. But is that, um, is that something that you feel as Latvian art or is this more um, an artistic style that comes from the Western countries? Um, actually, um, uh, Riga, Riga was a very international uh, city uh, before uh, World War II. So I would like to say that uh, it's uh, our culture because uh, there are not only Latvians in Latvia. Uh, of course, uh, nowadays there are um, a lot of Russian people, uh, but uh, also other uh, uh, nations. But um, before uh, World War uh, II, there was uh, were a lot of uh, German people. Uh, Jewish um, and many, many other nations. And uh, uh, actually the Latvian culture um, canon, it's not uh, Latvians like a nation, only Latvians. Uh, it's, uh, it's about all our culture and uh, we live there a lot of nations and uh, all we are, this is homeland for all of us, I would like to say, and this is art of all of us. Um, okay, uh, just because I didn't find human steel in the architecture mm -hmm. uh, part of uh, this page, mm -hmm. uh, but it was that what I, for me is the most present um, impression of 
special city building in Riga, this really huge part uh, with uh, wonderful, beautiful Jugendstil houses. Yes, um, actually this uh, um, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why isn't it in canon, uh, but uh, uh, actually this uh, ten-inch school building it's uh, it's more it's a bit uh, it's not uh, like classical uh, Jugendstils or it's called Art no no Art Nouveau mm. Art Nouveau yes uh, but it's like more uh, national uh, some uh, uh, transformation maybe uh, mm. from this. Uh, art no so um yes maybe maybe uh, uh, experts thought that it's uh, it's uh, too similar to other countries and that's why uh, they didn't uh, put it into a canon but i can't uh, answer you <laughs> but that's that's a good uh, question for discussion also so uh what have we there on a chat box? Uh, yes, so Julie wrote that for Kauri. If you visit Riga, you can't miss it. It's so large about Freedom Monument. Yes, totally agree. Uh -huh. And uh, Zal means salon. Uh, not really Zal is more, uh, <laughs> Zal is, it's, uh, actually second name, but also family name, but it's uh, more not, I think this meaning not like a salon, but more like gra grass, zale, grass. But it's, uh, zale in Latvian is also salon and grass. Uh-huh. And is Mark Rotko generally considered to be a Latin artist? There is a question. Uh, Yes, I would like to think so. <laughs> of course, uh, he spent only his childhood in Latvia, but uh, maybe uh, you know that we have this Mark Rotko Center in Daugavpils, uh, and there you can see also uh, original masterpieces of Mark Rotko, and this is a very beautiful place to go if you come to Latvia. So, but now uh, we, we can go further and uh, to, uh, we can go to performing arts and maybe I would like to say that, uh, so performing arts. <laughs> Um, um, in this category, there are represented uh, theater artists, directors, actors, and uh, legendary performances, masterpieces from different times. And also uh, there is a ballet art represented, the most significant choreographers. Um, uh, but uh, the performing art is uh, the most complicated type of art to give a correct impression afterwards because it's alive only in the present moment when it's uh, happening. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, the art of presence. Uh, so I won't ask you to choose, uh, but I'll give you a few short examples uh, uh, from Latvian uh, performance art. Um, and uh, one of the most famous figures uh, is Alvis Hermanis uh, and the New Riga Theater. Um, um, Alvis Hermanis and the New Riga Theater are the world's best known trademarks of contemporary Latin theater. Uh, this Herman's work and uh, recently political opinions being of immediate organcy and interest to audience across Europe. Uh, I'll show you uh, the video from one of his most famous performances called The Long Life, Gara uh, Dzive in Latvian. Uh, Herman is uh, memorably said that the life of every Latvian resident has more drama than the works of Shakespeare put together. Um, maybe you won't agree, but that's uh, what he said. 
And from here on out, uh, from this uh, performance, actors became co-authors, identifying and producing much of the material collectively uh, during the rehearsal uh, uh, process. Um, and a daring experiment in a theatrical narrative, the long life portraits without words a day in the life of the residents in a communal apartment. All of them are very old people. Actors were only in their thirties when it was first staged in uh, 2003, uh, but managed to precisely and touchingly show the way old people think and feel and act. And uh, this performance won uh, wor worldwide recognition. Audience in more than uh, 35 countries have connected with the mutually taught story of uh, feeble and very Latvian pensioners, a story which may point to the great silence that await us all. And um, I would like to mention that this performance, almost 20 years later, is still in the repertoire of the New Riga Theatre. And Hermans has told that they will uh, play it further to time when actors are already are the pensioners by themselves. And um, um, Hermans and his productions at the New Riga Theatre have received numerous international accolades including the prestigious uh, Europe Theatre Prize for uh, the theatrical, new theatrical realities in 2007. And since 2005, Hermans has been actively staging operas and plays in different German, Russian, Swiss, Italian, Austrian, Belgium, and French uh, theatre houses. So I, I hope I can share you this video. Maybe not all, but uh, to take a look. To stop share this and start share that. And you please say if you can't hear or you can see. <laughs> Oh, 
Jūsu Exciting to our Hermanis performance Garadive. And um, uh, the next example I would like to uh, share is uh, something very different. Uh, it's uh, this personality is like a bridge from performative arts to films. And I think every nation has somebody like him, uh, so-called new wave face, uh, like, uh, for example, Jean-Paul Belmondo or Jean-Louis Trentignan for French. Uh, uh, we have all this Utsitis, uh, and he was among the brightest in the constellation of Latin acting stars, both in theater and film, one of the most visible faces of theater and film in 1960s uh, to 80s. Uh, his appeal has never, uh, nevertheless persisted across audiences of different generations and eras. Um, and put its acute sensitivity to current trends in life and art made him an ideal actor for several directors, including the ones comprising the Latin culture canon, namely Peter Peterson's, Adolf Shapiro, and Oliot Scudders. Uh, and um, uh, this is uh, the legend of our national cinema. The film uh, uh, screening, uh, the film is called Four White Shirts or uh, Breathe Deeply. And uh, it was uh, restricted by Soviet authorities for nearly 20 years after its original premiere due to its conversional, uh, controversial stance on censorship and it wasn't widely shown until 1987. Uh, but in uh, 2018, uh, the digitally restored work was included in uh, the Cannes classical section of the Cannes Film Festival. You can see uh, the poster uh, here on this slide. Um, so uh, this was like a triumph uh, for uh, uh, the director of the film, uh, Roland Kalnic, who who went to Cannes Film Festival uh, uh, many years after after original premiere. Um, uh, but uh, in this film category, we have uh, twelve works selected. Uh, 
uh, in film mark important turning points in Latvian cinema, irrespective of their popularity. These films stand out for their outstanding artistic quality and fit perfectly into or even surpass global cinema trends, um, like uh, New Wave, uh, as uh, in, uh, in my previous example. And all the films included in Latvia's culture canon can be watched online at the National Cinema Center portal of Films LV. And um, uh, uh, actually, uh, these films can uh, be watched uh, worldwide, except maybe a few countries. Uh, but I hope it won't be your case. Uh, uh, and um, I'll give you a link uh, this time not to cultural canon web page, uh, and, uh, but to this uh, web page. And not all of films you can find there is classical selection. Uh, uh, in this classical selection are canon films, but I think it's more important to raise your interest. So uh, you can choose whatever seems exciting uh, for you. Um, I'll so yes. Uh, I'll I'll give you a link uh, to this uh, to this uh, uh, www.filmas.lv. Uh, so oh, down one minute. Um, so um, there you have a link. So please make your choice. Uh, you can read the uh, annotations and uh, I hope you can see also films afterwards. And again, 10, 10 minutes, maybe uh, we have a lack of time, maybe seven minutes for this task. Which, which film interests you most?
So does anybody want to share his or her choice? Which film interested you most? I maybe can um, add a thought on what I said before to large classes, this um, EPOS, um, national EPOS. Here, the film, um, as I read, is connected with the war of independence of the Latvians in 1919. So um, they tried to make sense out of this old mythical story for their national identity in the 20th century. And um, that's what I meant. It's very, um, I'm, it seems to be very present um, in the society, um, always when you're talking about uh, Latvian identity. It seems, but I didn't see the film. I'm going to watch it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comment. This film is also in Latvian cultural canon. Yes, mm -hmm. it's our treasure. It's a very interesting film without sound, without uh, speaking. So does anybody else want, want to comment about films? Well, I had to watch the uh, start watching the 10 minutes older, seeing as you started the presentation with this. So it's nice to hear. <laughs> Okay, if anybody wa wa wants to write down uh, something, you can continue this, uh, but uh, I'll go further because we have not much time anymore. Um, I'll go back to my presentation. Um, so, and... Um, there is a category of music. Uh, the 12 musical treasures com comprise both individually highlighted composers and compositions. Also, interpreters of music are undeniable and important part of the music scene. It was deli uh, deliberately decided not to list them here. Uh, but actually, I would like to add that, uh, a little comment that we really have brilliant and famous music interpreters who are more famous than composers. Uh, for example, uh, world famous opera singers like Elina Garancha, Christine Opolais, both of them have sung in the Metropolitan Opera and many other famous opera theaters. And also uh, our, uh, uh, our conductor, Andres Nelson, who is a music director of the Boston Symphony Orchestra and Gewandhaus Kapellmeister of the Gewandhaus Sort. Just uh, excuse my pronunciation, Leipzig. And these two positions, uh, in addition to his leadership of a pioneering alliance between both institutions, have firmly established uh, Grammy Award winning Nelson as one of the most re renowned and innovative conductors on the international scene today. Um, but uh, yes, as I mentioned, there are uh, uh, composers and compositions, and uh, they are very, very uh, interesting, uh, interesting values too. And um, I would like uh, to uh, to play you an example, which uh, includes. Uh, which is included in the Latv Latvian cultural canon. And um, this is a uh, song Putveni or Blow wine, Wind uh, for mixed uh, chore as arranged by Jurian Andres uh, a long time ago. Uh, and uh, it was the very first melody arranged by the composer published in the first volume of the collection Latvian folk songs for a mixed uh, Core with a piano accompaniment in 1884 in Riga. The a cappella version became popular at the uh, Latvian song celebration, and that was the beginning of Putveni 
immortality in uh, practically all subsequent Latvian song celebrations and hundreds of song days, both in Latvia and after the Second World War in concerts performed by American, Australian and European course. Just as in occupied Latvia, but also abroad, this uh, canonical song was a symbolic uh, substitute for the uh, Latvian national uh, anthem. As such, it played an important role in the uh, awakening and sing singing a revolution and it tends to be spontaneously sung at the end of countless uh, patriotic uh, events. And actually that's a bit strange uh, if you look only to the lyrics of the song uh, because in few words it's about a young man uh, who drinks uh, a lot on his own money and wants to marry a girl without her uh, parents' uh, permission. Uh, but of course it's uh, only one level and uh, you have to know uh, the context to understand it uh, fully. And in uh, this um, uh, in this um, video, you not only hear uh, the song, um, but also, 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 you can three, see three other elements of the cultural uh, canon, uh, traditional culture section, uh, folk songs, uh, song celebration, and Latvian folk. Uh, costumes. Uh, so now I'll try to share it with you.
if you could see uh, the song has a huge emotional impact to singers and listeners. Um, yes, I can agree that uh, this is so powerful. Um, yes, and uh, I wish I had a spotlight. But yes, I, I was looking for translations of lyrics, but I, I didn't find, find, find it. Um, so and there was a question, is this a midsummer celebration or are flower crowns always worn in Sini events? Uh, no, this wasn't midsummer celebration, this was a uh, uh, song celebration, but uh, yes, flower crowns are very popular uh, uh, in, in uh, singing uh, festivals and uh, other uh, events uh, like this um, um so um back to the presentation um uh, we have uh, reached uh this is our um the section this section landscapes uh, this uh, section in in the culture of canon is most recently, it has been added only this year, as I already told. And uh, there, uh, the, there uh, you can ask why to include uh, into the culture of canon landscapes, which are as a part of the nature. Uh, but one of the reasons is that they are created through the interaction of, nat uh, of natural forces and people. And also, I, uh, as I already mentioned, at the beginning of my presentation, we Latvians as a nation are more focused to our roots, also to countryside. Agriculture um, is a very important part of our identity. And landscapes are very important impression source for many artists. Uh, visual artists, writers, composers, art, architects, uh, etc. Uh, and landscapes are very important background of Latvian identity and culture. And uh, uh, now I just show you uh, these landscapes, which are included in the cultural canon, Abava, Rhine Valley landscape, Daugava River landscape, mm. landscape of Zemgala lowland, Gauja Prime Valley landscape, there is somewhere this is a river called Gaulian, very beautiful river. <laughs> and the Latvian Lake street landscape. The la landscape of Latvian forests. We are very proud of our forests. Uh, and the sea coast landscape, also very, very beautiful. And the landscape of Vitsa Mechil, he looks. And so actually, we, we have reached the end of the presentations of my presentations. If you have any questions, uh, if you want to add some comments, uh, you're welcome. I would like to hear some feedback. Or maybe if you are not, then I hope. Oh, yes, please, you will. Can you just put the last slide back up? Because I wanted to take um, a look at the, um, the website, the Culture Canon. Sorry, I can hardly hear you. Uh, can you put the last slide back up, please? Ah, OK. Yes, I can. I can. Uh, so. Uh, the last one you the last one with the reference okay oh, this it. one but uh, this was uh to uh, uh if you want uh, a link to landscapes uh just the this one this link the, the main one this is the main one yes yes thank you mm -hmm. okay
uh, uh, could you share your email or some contact? How could I reach you? Yes, I, I, I'll write it in the uh, chat box. So if you, oh, no, not correctly. Um, I, I'll, I'll write one more time. So this one, second one is correct. I have a short question. We didn't talk about the Lia Levada de Josta. Yes. But there is a documentary. Do you know if this documentary is also available in English? Did you heard about? I know this documentary, uh, but I'm not sure. Um, maybe with some subtitles, but I, I don't know actually where to find it. Uh, uh, but if you are very interested in it, I can ask uh, somebody from our National Film Center, maybe. It if would, you be want. would be wonderful, yes. Yeah. Yes, maybe you can uh, write me a yes. mail and I, I'll, I'll try to answer. Uh, I, I yes, will I'll answer write, you, but I'll try to find where. where I'll write an email yeah, to you. Okay, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So about Bill, um, <laughs> now uh, there is a question, is there any platform where we can watch Bill and maybe like Netflix? I'm afraid that not because of uh, its um, um, authorities. Uh, uh, it's expensive uh, to show, uh, show a film wo worldwide, um, so... Uh, we, we have tried uh, to show some films and our classical films uh, collection, which I, I show you, but um, about Bill, uh, no, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> Any other questions? No, but uh, about the movies of... Uh... Uh, Latvia is obviously a bit more modern, but the Blizzard of Souls, if you haven't seen it, is a really wonderful movie, which has recently become available on, I think, Amazon, maybe Netflix is quite easy to find now. And from this, I learned a lot about Latvia and the formation of the country. How's it called? Uh, in English is Blizzard of Souls. I, I, I have trouble saying it in Latvian. Mm -hmm. In Latvian, it's Dvesel uh, Putens. I, I always say Zelsash Putens, but my wife says <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but good, good. <laughs> but uh, no, Lils Paldias Maya. Um, I live here in Latvia and I learned so much today. It was it was really amazing and to know about this resources um, is really cool. And uh, uh, this weekend, I think we will go to Salas Pils to look at the memorial there. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. I also want to say that if you are interested in this film, you can watch the film for Ir iespējams noskatīties? Man liekas, tur arī līdzīga tām autortiesībā. Varbūt var iztulkot, kad ir vēl tāda filma, ko viņi labprāt, nu, varētu tā ir ļoti skaista filma, mm -hmm. tā ir mums jaunā arī. <laughs> yes, uh, Sarmīte uh, tells about uh, one more uh, or newest films, Homo Novus. Uh, it's very beautiful uh, movie, but uh, I'm afraid also that it's, uh, you can see it only in Latvia. <laughs> This is my favorite film now. <laughs> it's very, very, very interesting. And, uh, okay, so it's actually a spell. This will you at Skies to Malaga? So interesting. Thank you very much. Bob, let's pull this. That not a little bit. I say, Bob, let's pull this. Pagada, yes, but yes. Paldies, tā. 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 Tā.
Chao, Alicia.